Hey, this is Josh. Today we're working on probability. I already got my circle drawn for the lesson that we're going to be doing. And then I even wrote up a couple of the terms here because I just wanted to make sure that um, I wasn't spending too much time writing stuff. For those of you guys that know me, I don't write that fast. Um, you know, we do the best we can. I hope, I'm hoping that that is legible. And uh, so let's just jump in, shall we? We shall. Okay. Um, Let's talk about this stuff first, right? Hopefully you've gone over the vocab, you understand like what probability is and really what it comes down to is the possibility of something happening compared to the actual amount of things that could happen. Okay, let me grab the book here. The book says that probability of an event, right? And they're gonna put it P and then they're gonna put the parentheses which shows like what's gonna happen. So the probability of an event equals the number of favorable outcomes compared to the number of possible outcomes. And so really we're just creating a fraction and then reducing if possible. And so I got my little spinner wheel here that we're going to be using in just a second. Before we do that, I want to talk about these terms, okay? So these are kind of like all the things that could happen. We have the fact that it could be impossible, right? So I have a spinner here with numbers 1 through 8. What could be impossible with this one? Uh, let's say, how about spinning and getting a, a 12, right? It's not possible. And so with these problems for the assignment, I want you to figure out the probability of what's gonna happen and then figure out the fraction of what that is, write that out, and then turn that into a percent. And we'll do a couple together. So I have my spinner here, I spin a 12, it's impossible so it can't happen, so that's one possibility of what could happen. Um, then we have things that are unlikely, all right? And unlikely, I'm gonna say, let me write this down here, is gonna be less, then 50, oops, 50, that's kind of bad, uh, less than 50%, okay? So if the probability as you turn these into a percent, if it's less than 50%, then we're gonna say that that's an unlikely thing that could happen. In this situation, I could say, you know, what is the probability that I would roll, like, I don't know, certain numbers, right? And then you would say, well, the fact that I get this percent less than 50, like let's say I get a percent that's like 20%, right? 20% probability is gonna mean it's gonna be unlikely. Um, equally likely is gonna be when you have a 50-50, 50 50% situation. So we'll write down, I'm just gonna write down 50% for that guy, okay? Because if it's equally likely, it's kinda like heads or tails, right? What is the probability of getting heads versus getting tails? I know some people, when, as I was saying that, I'm like, I know there's some people out there that are gonna say, hey Josh, what about like when the coin lands on its side, right? That there's like a one ten billionth chance that a thing could happen, that that could happen, I don't know, whatever, right? The most of the time, you're gonna end up with a heads or tails situation, so we'll just say it's a 50% probability, okay? It's equally likely to have one or the other. The next one here is likely. So now we have less than 50%, we have 50%, and now we have likely, which is gonna be more than 50%. Okay, and that pretty much goes from like, like 50, 50%, I mean 50% is gonna be equally, so I guess 51% all the way up to 99.99999, you know, pretty much like almost a sure thing, okay? That would be something we would consider likely. And then we have certain, which is the direct opposite of impossible, which is just, it's gonna happen, okay? And certain is 100%, okay? So I wanted to make sure we talked about those because I know it really wasn't very well explained in the book and I don't think there was a really good example of all of this. So I wanted to take a second, make sure you understand the vocabulary. We're skipping some stuff in this chapter because some of the topics are just not pertinent to what we're doing this year. And so I wanted to make sure that at the least you understand these terms and then let's apply it to some of these problems or situations. Okay, this is a pretty quick lesson. Um, I might not even have time for a joke, but we'll see. Okay, um, so hopefully you've written this down. This makes sense now. Now let's apply it to this, okay? Um, let's see here, oops. Can I erase this thing? Well, I guess I'll just leave it up here. I'll put my probabilities up in this space right up here. And then we'll look at the spinner and see what we get, okay? Uh, let's see here. Okay, so the probability, this is how the book is gonna write it. 
Um, you know what? I guess that's high enough. Let me make sure on the camera here. Let me make sure that that isn't out of range. Okay, it looks great. Um, the probability of getting a four. That's really what they're trying to say. The probability of getting an, a four, right? The probability of an event. And the event is always going to be in the parentheses. So the probability of getting a four, well, how many spaces do we have here? We have eight. So I always write the total at the bottom first. Um, that's just the way my brain works, right? What is the total number of outcomes? There's eight. Okay, what's the probability of getting a four? Well, there's just one spot that has a four, okay? So I really can't do much, okay? Then it's gonna say convert it into a percent. So now you need to do what we've been doing all year. And if you remember, that's awesome. If you don't, just follow along. How do we convert this into a percent? Well, we read our fractions a certain way. And if you're saying down, awesome, because that is that is a rule that is never gonna change. We always read our fractions down. And what I mean by that is that's how we enter it into the calculator. One divided by eight equals, and then we get our answer. So one divided by eight equals 0.125. How do I know? Just because I already did it earlier. Um, and we're good to go. Okay. Um, 0.125, well, that's a decimal. Got to turn it into a percent. Two ways to do that. You can take the easy route, which is just move the decimal two times to the right and get 12.5%. Or you can then, or you could times it by 100 or multiply it by 100, and then it moves it over two times to the right. Either way is going to work. Step one is to write this out as your fraction probability. Step two is to write it out as a percent. Step three is then to look at your list here and say, okay, what probability is this? Well, this guy is less than 50%, um, and it's not impossible because it actually can happen. So therefore, this one is gonna be an unlikely, okay? I'm thinking you already are catching on to this. This shouldn't be that bad of a lesson because we've done a lot of this stuff throughout the year, like working with fractions and understanding decimals and percents. So that part should not be too bad. Okay, um, let's see here. What's the probability of getting an even number? Okay, well, same thing as before. What's my total number of outcomes? I always write that down first. Then I worry about the top. My even numbers, right? Because that's what they're asking me to find. Uh, let's see here. I got two, four, six, eight. So I got four of them. Okay. Four out of eight. Maybe you're already saying that reduces, Josh. Oh, okay, that's great. Uh, to one half. So now I have my probability. And in the book, they are going to want you to reduce the fractions if possible. So don't leave four over eight. It's just good practice. You know, if you're going into algebra next year, take the time and reduce this down to one half. Get better at reducing the fractions. The more you practice, the better you'll be, and you do a ton of that in Algebra 1, so it's to your advantage to do it now and just get in that habit. You also have, if you're using the TI-30 or 32 Texas Instruments, um, if you're using a calculator, remember there's an F to D button, um, a fraction to decimal button that will reduce fractions for you. If you haven't used that calculator or didn't know that that could work, then, Look it up. It's a great little tool if you're allowed to use that type of a calculator in class. One divided by two, read a fraction down. One divided by two is 0.5, which is 50%. So 50% is equally likely, okay? So your answer should look like this. You should have probability of even, one half, because you reduced it, 50% because you turned it into a percent. Why? Because the book asked you to. And then the last part is, what is the likeliness of it? Equally likely. Okay? All right. So now let's just do a couple more of these guys, and we will wrap this show up. Well, let's see here. I guess I'll just erase a whole bunch of that. Okay. Um, the probability of greater than five. Okay? So what is the probability of getting something greater than five? Okay. Well, I don't know. Let's figure it out. Um, okay, I put my number on the bottom, right? What are the numbers greater than five? Now people always ask, well, Josh, do I include five? No, because we're looking for something greater than five. So five does not count. So we have six, seven, and eight. So we have three, okay? Uh, let's see here. Um, 
we read our fractions down. So let me just jump over here because I didn't have that guy for some reason. And um, 0.375. First I'd look and see does it reduce and it doesn't, so that's fine. Um, three divided by eight is 0.375. Let me just switch this real quick. And okay, so I have my fraction, it didn't reduce. I have my decimal. I can move that over twice and I get 37.5%. That guy will be unlikely, right? Because it's less than 50%. That's the probability of that happening. So once again, if you follow the steps that I'm showing, it's very straightforward. Take your time with this stuff, right? Don't just go so fast. Students go so fast through some of this stuff. They write the fraction, they reduce it in their head, and then they move on and get a decimal. It's like, it's like, just slow down, okay? This is not that difficult. And if you go step by step by writing in your values, reading it down, putting that into your calculator, three divided by eight equals, getting your decimal, writing it down, you're gonna do just fine. All right. Uh, okay, let's just do one more because there was something on the homework that showed up and I thought, oh man, uh, I want to make sure that I at least talk about that guy as well because it's a little bit tricky. But maybe when you see it, you'll go, dude, that wasn't even that hard. Okay, uh, let's see here. The probability of a prime, a prime number, okay? My total is eight. Now let's figure out, well, what numbers are prime, okay? Um, one, two, three, five, seven, possibly. I know two is prime, I know three is prime, I know five is prime and seven is prime, and that's four, okay? Now, you might be saying, Josh, is one prime? I don't know. No, I'm just kidding, I do. Um, as weird as it sounds, one is not a prime number. You know, and, and you got to look back. There's this whole like mathematical algorithm thing that, you know, shows this and a theorem that goes with it. Like, why is the number one not prime? Because you can divide it by itself, but like you kind of can't. Um, if you want all that, go, go research that on your own. Uh, but the bottom line is one is not a prime number. And it's a common mistake that a lot of students make. And so that's why I wanted to make sure we talk about this one. One, because it shows up on the homework, but two, just because it's a good talking point. So... Prime numbers would be two, three, five, seven. And I think we're good to go. Four divided by eight is, let's see here. Well, we read our fraction down or we just reduce it uh, to one half, which is the same as 50%. So I have my fraction, I have my decimal, and then this one is another equally likely, okay? And so I wanted to make sure we at least talk about that guy as well. Okay, um, let's see here. Oh, I forgot to throw in a joke, so let me just throw in one real quick. Um, the other day, you know, uh, I was staying at home every day. I'm kind of bored, and you know, I was sitting on my um, on my couch just relaxing. And then I thought, well, let me get up and you know, go on a walk today because it's kind of nice. So I got my kids, and you know, we went out the front door. And I woke up. And, I'm sorry. When I walked out that front door, I noticed that someone had dumped a bunch of Legos all over our front porch. And I don't know, you know, call me dumb, but I didn't know what to make of it. <laughs> okay, so let's finish right there on that note. If that didn't make sense, maybe watch it again. Uh, send me some jokes, send me some questions. Take, take your time with this probability stuff because I know you can do it and I'll see you soon.